God has an encouraging word for you today through the Bible-based teaching of Dr. Don Wilton. As we study God's word together, connect with us online at tewonline.org or on the phone at 866-899-9673. Now let's open our hearts and God's word together with Dr. Don Wilton and God's encouraging word. I'm going to ask you to open your Bibles today to 1 Peter and the first chapter. 1 Peter and the first chapter. The call to holiness. Therefore, preparing your minds for action and being sober-minded, set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, do not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance, but rather as he who called you is holy, so you also must be holy in all your conduct since it is written you shall be holy for I am holy isn't that an amazing few verses what a statement what an impossibility you mean me you mean I'm not asked? I'm told? How can this be? Considering this human condition, does God not know that I've got strong feelings? Does He not know that I vote? Does God not know that I get hurt? <laughs> Does God, God not know that I've got an intellect I can think for myself? Does God not understand that I've got values? All of these things run interference on any endeavor Oh, did I mention sin? Does God not know that I'm a sinner by nature and by choice and that my sin is ever before me? What does holiness communicate? Holy living, being like, talking like, acting like Jesus. What does it communicate? Three things. It communicates God's sovereignty. The almightiness of God. That's what holiness communicates to the world. Second, Jesus' divinity. Holiness communicates God's sovereignty. He's above all. He's in all. He's through all. Nothing was made that was not made by him. He is almighty God. But it also, holiness communicates Jesus' divinity. Now what does that mean? He was both God and man. So when you and I live out by the Spirit, the holiness of God, we are showing the divinity of Jesus. We're showing him both as the Son of God slain from before the foundation of the world, but we're also showing him tempted in all points just as we are yet without sin. That's what you're showing. You're showing humanity under the conquering power of the Spirit of the living God. The can-do of the impossibility of the human condition. What does holiness communicate? Three things. God's sovereignty, Jesus' divinity, 
And number three, the Spirit's intercessory. That's what you're communicating. Because the Spirit of God is the great intercessor, mediator, with Jesus, presenting my case before the throne of grace. Needless to say, with uh, our background, Karen and I uh, have been uh, quite interested in, you know, all the things that are going on in the United Kingdom with the death of Queen Elizabeth. It, it has amused me from time to time, showing all the background, uh, especially the presence of the United States and people who put their arm around the queen and don't follow protocols. But the thing that tickles me most is the number of times when evidently there was a function at Buckingham Palace or where Windsor or wherever it might be and there's an audience and somebody shows up that hasn't been invited. <laughs> uh, uh -huh. Some of you might remember you got a, a pastor who made a terrible mistake 30 years ago. I sat in her seat by mistake. And she wasn't there, and I didn't go to the Tower of London, but I somewhat get the feel of that. Do you know that there are people, famous people, who have showed up because they're famous and think they can just walk in and say, oh, hello, queen. You don't do that. But can I tell you something? Holiness shows the welcoming inclusiveness of every believer at the throne of God himself. <laughs> Can I say this in good southern? Your invitation is done done, big boy. You got it. Your protocol is in place. So holiness communicates every small expression of God's holiness. You are communicating God's sovereignty, Jesus' divinity, and the Holy Spirit's intercessory. You are showing God You see, God's holiness is his crown. It's his coronation, which was never placed there by any man. God's holiness makes God God. God is not God plus holy. It's his crown. It's who he is. His holiness sets him apart. The psalmist perhaps put it in such a beautiful way when the psalmist said in Psalm 96, and I think verse 9, Let's come together and worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. And, and another rendition of that in the Hebrew text is, when we come together, let's worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness or the splendor. That word there, there's a paucity of English descriptive. You cannot find an adjective sufficient to describe the magnificence of God's holiness. And the psalmist captured that. Let's gather together in the beauty, in the splendor of God's holiness. So what would be, just to help us get a handle on this, <laughs> what would be some of the attributes of God's holiness? How, how do we describe it? I, I wrote down five of them. There are a lot of them. Number one, God's holiness is limitless. It's limitless. 
2 Corinthians 3 and verse 18. Now, this is a powerful verse. We all, we all, all believers with unveiled face. <sighs> Hold on. When Moses went up Mount Sinai, and I've been up Mount Sinai with a bunch of you. Remember that? Being on top of Mount Sinai. He was at the peak at the top. Moses went up there. And evidently he tried to strike a deal with God. He said, listen, if I could just look at you. God said, what? If you look at me, you'd be vaporized. You cannot stand my holiness. What I will do is I'll hide you in a cleft of a rock. And so he put Moses into the cleft of a rock and he just passed him by. And the full fragrance and preciousness of the holiness of God infiltrated him to the point that when God's servant Moses went down back to be among the people, his face shone. And that was with the face covered up. Here comes Jesus. <laughs> what happened when Jesus went to the cross? The curtain was torn in the temple from top to bottom. No more separation, no more veil. Come right in. I, Jesus said, am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father but by me. God's holiness is limitless. And, and, and Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of God, watch this, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory just as by the Spirit of the Lord. <laughs> That's a word for you and me about the limitlessness of God's holiness applied into my life and into your life. God's holiness is limitless. God's holiness is present. Is another great attribute God's holiness is present in the Psalms. I mean, the Psalms are replete with this. There were so many references. The, Psalm, the psalmist reminds us over and over again that we who belong to him can live in him and enter into the living, activated presence of God perpetually. And you know, he told us that. He said, I will never leave you. That is the conferring of the crown of his holiness upon every one of us by his spirit perpetually. In every avenue of life, everywhere at all times. God's holiness is powerful. Colossians 1.16, Bible says God is before all things and in him all things hold together. This is the application of who God is as holy translated into our lives that this one is the one by whom all things are held together. And I am integral part of that. You talk about being triumphant. Number four, God's holiness is unchangeable. We have to consider this as one of the prime attributes of the holiness of God. It's unchangeable. When you fast forward and we get into the final book, into the Revelation... If I had another nine years, I'd start all over again. So we could get to chapter 19. But in chapter 19, the heavens open. 
for the final time. Heaven opens. And here comes the Lord Jesus Christ. And when Jesus comes in Revelation chapter 19, accompanied by all believers, the armies of heaven, and he lands right there on the Mount of Ascension in Jerusalem, the Bible gives us the ultimate description of him in Revelation 19 verse 11. God wants us to know that Jesus Christ is faithful and true. The word there means he is the same yesterday and today and forever. He's the unchangeable one. That's God's holiness. God's holiness is never refreshed. God's holiness never needs to be brought up to speed. God's holiness does not need to be informed. God's holiness doesn't need to keep up with trends. God's holiness doesn't have an opinion. He's unchangeable. One more, God's holiness is flawless. Flawless. The flawlessness of God's holiness speaks to his purity without error or fault. So, bringing this together, if one considers the attributes of God's holiness, what is holiness? Really, you can describe the descriptiveness of holiness. This is where it ends, where it where it goes to God's holiness, first of all, is a spirit-induced desire. You're a believer. You've given your life to Christ. And just as the Spirit convicted you of your sin, watch this, the Spirit convicts you of righteousness. What is righteousness, folks? It's not just a fancy word, an easy way to apply that in our lives. The beginning part, right as God. Righteousness, right according to God's holiness. And the Spirit of God, so what is holiness? It's a spirit-induced. I am compelled by the Spirit of God to be holy, to live in a manner that is well-pleasing to the Lord Jesus. Anything less than that is going to bother you because you have the Spirit of God in you. By the way, the, 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 the mere fact of the botheration that comes in you is the greatest sign that you're a believer. Does it bother you when you behave like that? Does it bother you when you shoot your mouth off? Does it bother you when that language comes out of your mouth? Does it bother you when you go to that place? Does it bother you when you talk to someone you love like that? Does it bother you when you gossip? Does it bother you? This is, this is holiness personified. If you're not bothered by the way you are behaving, you're not a believer, my friend. You can be a member of this church for 150 years. You're not a believer. You don't know Jesus. It is a spirit-induced desire. Number two, what is holiness? It's a spirit-convinced gift. It's a spirit. Holiness, I really want you to try and get a hold of this. 
It's not only a spirit-induced desire. This is the propensity of the believer to be holy because God is holy. The Spirit of God is driving me. But it's also a spirit-convinced gift. It's a gift. It is the ultimate gift that God gives to all believers. The gift of God's hope. You are receiving the greatest gift ever. We all love gifts. Everybody loves gifts. Why don't some of you test me out? I'd like right now $30,000. And you want to go right out of chair? I say, man, boy, look at that. Someone gave me $30,000 or 10000 or gave me this or gave me that. We love that. And we exchange gifts. We give gifts to our family and so on and so forth. But there, sure, is there any greater gift that God gives to us than by his spirit to be like Jesus? What a gift. And number three, it's a spirit-produced fruit. So if you're trying to define holiness, it's a spirit-induced desire, it's a spirit-convinced gift, but it is a spirit-produced fruit. Holiness is the very fruit of our salvific relationship. This is the imputed righteousness of Christ. I, I, I'm lost in my sin. And I'm, I'm speaking to someone today. Right now, you don't know Jesus. You're lost in your sin. And the Spirit of God is convicting you of your, of your sin. You confess that sin to him. And receive Christ into your heart and into your life. God is not only going to produce in you this desire to be like Jesus. He's going to give you the gift of holiness because you have the desire and you pursue it. And it's going to result in the fruit of your life. Listen to me, folks. I'm, I'm not making anything You and I are going to die. Is not the greatest gift God could ever give to us to leave the gift of holiness? Won't you just think about that? What does holiness prove? Does it prove anything? It proves the genuineness of our faith. It proves the evidence of our love. It, it proves the essence of our testimony. It proves the requirement of our obedience. It's the walk of our talk. It's the leader of our follow. It's the submission of our obedience. It's the evidence of our, fa of our faith. So where do you see holiness? You see it in our walk. You see it in our conversation. Where do you see holiness? You see it in our attitude. You, you, you see it in our posture, body language. Posture. Vibes. You ever spoken to somebody who's a Christian and you pick up a vibe and it's not a good vibe? Be careful. And so you and I might look at something like this and say, as I suggested to you at the beginning of this message, how can we? This is what Paul said in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8. He said, whatever is true, 
whatever is honorable, whatsoever is just, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think on these things. You know, as Doc is talking about this idea of what are we thinking on? What is going on in our heads? What are we spending our time watching on social media? All of things come into our heads and our hearts and they control our lives. I pray that you know that today, it could be that all you've heard from Dr. Don is God loving you and letting you know he wants to lead you in your life because he created you and he knows what's best for you. It starts with a decision to say yes to Jesus, to accept him as Savior and Lord. And I would love to lead you in a simple prayer that'll help you start that. You can either repeat the words after me or just say me too, God, as I lead you. Lord God, thank you for your love, even when I haven't felt it for me. Lord, help me to turn my back on my sin and to trust you. Lord, I want you to be in charge of my life, to be the CEO. I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you died on the cross and rose from the grave. And I believe you can save me. Do it. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. It really is straightforward and simple like that. As you open your heart to God, God's ready to do the saving. You know, our pastor, Dr. Don Wilton, has some free resources that he would love to put in your hands that'll help you grow in your faith. Give us a call, give us a text. Let us speak in and encourage you. We are here at the Encouraging Word for that very purpose. We are here to encourage you. We all could use some encouragement. If you need to touch base, we're online at TEWonline.org, 24 hours a day. Let's connect.